who specialized in bobcats. And suppose you were able to find them at good prices that made it worth buying a trailer and maybe even traveling out of state to pick them up and just specialize in that one item. You could conceivably just do one sale a month and be very comfortable. That's pretty awesome. Um, yeah. And so you'll help people figure out how to do that, I'm sure, with your courses and, and training and coaching that you offer. Exactly. We, um, we, one of the main things that I try to tell everybody that's in the course too, um, you kind of start where your comfort zone is. You, you, you try, you don't want to go out and like me, I, I, I invest in weird stuff. Probably my, my bread and butter was exercise equipment. That's, that's what I knew. My wife's a personal trainer. Um, but I, I, even when I was younger, I invested in Nordic tracks, um, ski machines that were exercise equipment. So I have a, a kind of an edge on exercise equipment. I could always pick out a good piece of exercise equipment, know what I could pay for it and flip it. So if you're, uh, uh, uh say a music teacher at school, yeah, you, you kind of want to look for some instruments that you're familiar with. Right. You know, if you're, uh, if you're in construction and you deal with tools, you kind of want to look at some good deals on tools. So we try to teach you how to narrow down exactly what you should be looking for at first. And then you just keep your mind open to some other stuff that comes along, um, that you can spot and, and know that you make some money on it at the same time. Yeah, that's a great, great tip. You know, uh, that's a big takeaway. I do a lot of things involving people's businesses with technology. And, of course, my niche flea markets um, is identified because it's something I'm passionate about and I understand. And I think it's important for everybody who's launching into a business not to just say, oh, my goodness, you can make a ton of money off of bobcats if you've never even seen a bobcat you know, exactly. before, right? You're not going to do well. You probably get taken for a ride by the guy selling you the one that doesn't run and, oh, it just needs a battery, right? So exactly. you want to make sure that you know what you're doing. And in you know, some cases, you may take a leap like the artificial leg <laughs> where you can tell it works and you know it's obviously worth something more than you're able to obtain it for. Those are, those are also a good way to go. But mostly I think it sounds like you're recommending um, that people pursue something they're very knowledgeable about their passion or their hobby, for example. Uh, in my case, I live off of grid. So I have a little bit of a passion for interesting engineering that doesn't involve electricity, like solar or water pumps that run on gravity and things. If I saw those, I'd be knowledgeable enough to know that they worked, that they were useful, that they were modern and resellable. So I would I would want to apply what I know to the game. As it exactly, was. exactly. Cool. Um, so we've covered the coolest thing and the most expensive and, and quite possibly the strangest thing I've ever heard of anyone flipping with the artificial leg. Um, is there any other flip that you want to tell us about that you find either exemplary of what flipping is all about or that you just thought was really awesome to be able to do? Well, um, well, I'll give you a quick story, an example of a, a flip we did just in December. Um, I had some friends – who were over at the house right before Christmas, and they couldn't find uh, one of these projection lights. I, I don't. I, they're called laser lights or something like that. Uh, you put them in front of the house, and they they do a, a big blanket of uh, of like sparkly lights on your house for or decoration Christmas outside or holidays. Yeah, those, right. exactly. Well, I I didn't know anything about them. A friend said they looked all over at all uh, Walgreens, Walmart's, all the places. They couldn't find anything. Um, so anyways, this was on Friday night. We were hanging out with them Saturday morning when I went to the flea market. Surprisingly, I saw a lady who had about 30 of these boxes of these actual, uh, laser star lights, whatever, whatever they are. And she had, I, I don't remember exactly how many there were, but I, I noticed them because my friend was talking to me the night before. So, um, I jumped on my phone. I, I checked to see what they were selling for at Walmart, um, Walgreens, stuff like that. And she was trying to sell them for $10 a box. And, I think they were selling the stores for 40, something, 40 or $50. So I bought 10 boxes from her right there at the flea market. Um, I went home and I listed them right on eBay right away. And I sold them, sold, sold them within, I think it was that day or the next day. Uh, no, I think it was all that day, the, the first day from the flea market. I sold all those 10 on eBay. And then I went back the next day um, and purchased a, don't hold me to these numbers, but I, I think I purchased another uh, 30 or 40 from her. She said she had more at her storage unit. Um, which I ended up going back, following her to her storage unit, and and purchased more. So, anyways, the we we sold these uh, probably a week or two before Christmas. We sold these lights, and we ended up selling. Uh, I believe it was close to seventy. Um, wow. Seventy, yeah. I ended up making thirty thirty four hundred dollars, right, right, right around thirty five hundred dollars within a couple of days, just by taking advantage of these laser lights that 
nobody could find in a retail store, but you could still sell them on, you know, Craigslist, uh, Facebook, you could sell them on eBay, which we sold them in all different venues. And, and we made some good money just taking advantage of, you know, supply and demand. Um, and that's just a great story for people to just keep your eyes open keep when you, when you come across something, try and try and find everything out about it that you can. Yeah. I just heard three value bombs in that, um, little discussion. One thing is that as we've talked, I've learned that you can flip anything from a bobcat to a light bulb to an artificial leg to, gosh, I think you mentioned mattresses in one of our conversations. You had gotten into a clearance with a hotel, um, just, you know, furniture, toys, tools, Anything you can imagine, basically the goal, find things that people want or need, which leads me to the second value bomb I heard you say. Someone told you they were looking for something, and then you found it, and then you recognized you could sell more of them. And and that leads to the third value bomb, which is not only do you want to listen to what people are telling you they wish they had or, or could use or need so that you can go find it and provide it to them, but also that you bought a few at first, and you took care of your friend, and you tried some more, and it worked. So then you went back and cleaned out the warehouse, so to speak, testing, testing what you're doing. Now, with the artificial leg, there was one shot, one leg. <laughs> I'm fascinated by that story. It's so weird. And and then, um, you know, with the other product, it sounds like, you know, it was sort of a new item. Probably they were in the box. Someone had gotten them at a clearance or an overstock or something and, and brought them to the flea market where you found them and identified them as useful and wanted because your friend had mentioned it. And then you moved them quickly and went back and bought all she had. So number one, it can be anything. Number two, listen to what people are looking for and find it and be a provider. And number three, um, if it works, do it again, right? Exactly. Okay. Um, that's really, really good stuff. And again, I don't want to you know, give up all your secrets and strategies. Your course, I'm sure, covers in much more detail how to do this. Things like the fourth thing that I heard, which... I don't really uh, I know that we have time to elaborate on here is that you sold on Facebook and eBay and sometimes Amazon and sometimes at the flea market. And I'm sure there are folks who are going to need help getting started with how to sell on Facebook. There's a lot of different ways, but what's the right way? Is it Facebook ads? Is it the Facebook stores now? Or, you know, how do you how do you decide when to put it on eBay, when to go to Facebook, when to go to Amazon? These are things I'm assuming you cover in the university. Exactly. Yeah, we, we try and, and, and uh, teach you um, for whatever item you're purchasing or, uh, you know, looking to purchase uh, where where the best avenue is to uh, to flip it, to unload it. Um, but, yeah, we'll we cover quite a few different venues. And like you said earlier in the uh, in the call that uh, um, there's people you, if, if you don't even like going out to the flea markets and going out to do stuff, you can sit at your house and shop on Craigslist, offer up, let go. All these different, and we teach you about this in the course, but you can shop from all these different places for used stuff, um, and then you'll have to go pick it up and bring it back to your house and then sell it on a different venue for for profits. Um, one quick story, I'll, I'll give you another example. I There's a, a OfferUp is a, an app on that I, I we use down here. Um, I use it quite a bit, but um, some guy listed an exercise equipment, and I knew it was, it was an exercise bike, and I knew it was expensive. Um, he listed it. I, I ended up making the deal with him online. I didn't even talk to the guy. He told me his address. I went and picked it up, um, and paid $200 for it. I sold it a week. I believe it took me about a week to list it. It, it didn't need anything. It was in perfect condition. Um, yeah, I listed it and I sold it for 20, uh, $2,800, um, is what I, the selling price was. And then I ended up charging the person $400 for shipping. Um, so, and I didn't, all I did was pick it up off, pick it up from his house, bring it back to my house and uh, list it online and sell it to, you know, just like you said, millions of viewers shopping for that item um, that you have an option of selling it. So that's that's another one of the items in, um, that I had recently done. Awesome. So you're basically doing this full time and you support, I know that you have a wife and at least one child, right? Yes, we, uh, we actually have three children. Three children. So you've got a family of five and you're making a living at flea market flipping. Folks, that's an inspiration right there. First of all, making a living at anything with three kids is inspirational, uh, especially when I heard one uh, crying and going down for a nap before we got on the call. So I know that one of them at least is keeping you awake at night. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Uh, that's that's just great stuff. Anybody can do this, folks. If, if you're on your own, you know, you're single and you have a lot of time, well, you're going to have a bit of an edge to spend time shopping and so on. But even Rob, with his family of five, 
is able to provide a comfortable lifestyle for them. Let's talk about that lifestyle for a second. Um, you have a blog post about this, so I know it's not part of the secret information. What's a typical week like for you? You said five to 15 hours a week, I think. Yeah, of course. Yeah, we, uh, I typically will stop by some thrift stores, um, two or three times a week at, that are close to my house. Um, and I, I, I do the flea market, you know, every Saturday and Sunday religiously. Uh, I go there. I love walking around. Um, and that's where I usually find my best deals, but I'll, I'll do that. Um, but a total of maybe, I don't know, five hours of shopping. If that, that's even sounds a little steep, um, of shopping in a week. And then, you know, the rest of the time is, is, uh, if, if I buy anything to resell, I'll, you know, you clean it up, uh, wipe it down, get it ready to resell. Um, and then you list it and, and ship it out or whatever you have to do to meet people to, to buy it, uh, or to, to finish the deal. So that's typically what, I do. I do it uh, in my spare time, um, uh, and and you know anywhere from five to fifteen hours a week, and and we've been able to make uh, a significant you know extra income coming in. Yeah, and now your full time income. So I imagine that with even more time available, as you've left employment and the career world to pursue this over the last year, that you could scale it up if you really went whole hog and worked at it every day for eight hours a day like a job. You could go from 15 to 40 hours and potentially uh, increase your income accordingly as well. But you don't have to, and that's the beauty of it. So why do you do this instead of a regular job? Um, you know, the, I, this is what my passion is. I love uh, finding deals. I love, uh, um, you know, helping people. I, You know, even when we buy and resell, we're still, you know, we buy on the, the low end. Um, people are still making money on us. Uh, then we turn around and we still sell it for way below what retail is on the items. So, you know, we're helping people out uh, in both avenues. You're helping the buyers and the sellers, um, and you're helping yourself at the same time. So it's just a passion. I, I, I love what I do. I love the, the freedom of this this business is, you know, my, one of my passions is also my family, uh, being able to, you know, take my daughters to school, being able to spend time with them. Um, just it's it's the family lifestyle. So that's what I enjoy doing. I get that you really like to help people. Your your website is filled with testimonials from people that have worked with you and your coaching to actually make real money. Um, those are worth taking a look at for inspiration for anyone who's interested in this lifestyle to see what other people have done with Robbie's help. Um, actually, on his website, it says Robbie. I met him as Rob, and he introduces himself as Robert. But I think as long <laughs> as you call him, he'll be happy. Um, anyway, uh, so... You know, I, I had written in the notes to you that I wanted to ask you, what, why do you think this is a good long-term plan for folks? I think the question I was really reaching for there is, do you think that this is a perennial business that is not just a trend, but rather something uh, that could be sustainable? Uh, I do. I, uh, I, I mean, you look at your, your, you're providing a service to people. Like I, like I said earlier, um, you're, you're offering a a product, uh, you're buying it as cheap as you can buy it and then you're selling it, um, for a decent price, but still underneath retail. And people are always looking to get good deals on, on whatever they're shopping for. I mean, be it automobiles, uh, exercise equipment, um, you know, anything, anything that people are really looking for, they're always trying to get the best deal they can. So, um, no matter what the economy does, you know, there's always people out there looking for used it, use stuff and, and find good deals on it. So even retail, I mean, uh, people looking for new stuff, but for the cheapest price they can get it on Amazon or eBay or anything like that. So I really do. I think it's sustainable. I think it's a, a great business to get into. I think it was Warren Buffett, and don't quote me on who I'm quoting here. His concept was that when the market is down, when the economy is poor, buy everything. You know, And it occurs to me that with the sellers out there, in a down economy, you're going to find great deals on things that people need. And in an up economy, they're going to discard things more easily. So there's always going to be things that you can get at a fair price or a, a margin you can make money off of. Um, so I don't think that's going away. And flea markets, which are my niche, I like to tell people or remind people are one of the oldest professions in the world. And we won't go too far with what the oldest one is. But the point is, there have been open markets, you know, they're, they're mentioned in the Bible. So um, if you look at that as, as uh, a time period, then you know that for thousands of years, people have been buying and selling things to each other. Um, and, 
you know, basically probably since the first caveman sold another caveman a cave. 